Hello, and welcome to the Superhero Hub. I'm Sam. I'm Matt. And today we are opening up... The Superhero Files. <laughs> yeah. And what page have we turned to today? Deadpool. Yeah. Um, I thought I'd pick him, because why not? And the second film's currently in production, so I thought uh, for all the people who have uh, only watched the first film and, you know, um, posed off that and don't really have any knowledge of the comic book character. <laughs> Just like you. No, I know a lot about Deadpool. Okay. That's why this is going to be seamless. Uh, I know that his name's Wade. What's his middle name then? Who cares? Right. <clears throat> So let's get on with it. Let me just turn to the correct page and we are a go. So uh, Deadpool or Wade Winston Wilson is a fictional anti-hero appearing in American comic books published by (laughs) Marvel Comic. Yeah, so it's created by Rob Liefeld and writer Fabian Fabian Niskis the the, the, uh, the character first appeared in the New Mutants issue 96 cover dated February 1991 uh, initially Deadpool was depicted as a super villain when he made his first appearance in the New Mutants and later in issues of X-Force <laughs> uh, but later evolved into his more recognisable uh anti-hero persona uh, Deadpool whose real name is Wade Wilson is uh, disfigured and a mentally unstable mercenary with super hit, with the superhuman ability of accelerating healing power and physical prowess apparently that's a superpower now uh, the character is known as the Merc of a man very good because of his talkative nature and tendency to break the four four nice uh, which is used by writers for humorous effects and uh, running gags uh, yeah so, so like um, yeah, nothing against Rob Liefeld but he is kind of credited with creating Deadpool which he did do but like I said earlier the most famous part of Deadpool really is his personality which he didn't get until he got fleshed out down the years, really. Yeah, so basically, is the kind of, is a rip-off of Deathstroke, the DC right. comic book character's character, in terms of, like... That, 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 that's essentially what it was when he debuted by Rob Liefeld. That's people, you know, I have nothing against the guy, but that's kind of why people knock on him, because his most famous character, when he created him, was this rip-off of... Deathstroke, and then other people made him into the funny, cracking, wise cracking guy again. Yeah, so obviously Wade Wilson being a thing of Slade Wilson. Uh, other inspirations were Spider Man and Wolverine. Uh, Liefeld stated, and I quote in parentheses Wolverine and Spider Man were two properties I was competing with at the time. I didn't have those. I didn't have access to those. I'd made my own Spider-Man and Wolverine. That's what Cable and Deadpool were meant to be. My own Spider-Man and my own Wolverine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need you to tell us that, Rob. It's kind of obvious, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, both Deadpool and Cable were also meant to be tied into Wolverine's history already from the start, as Liefeld describes. Also in parentheses, Wolverine was my guy. If I could tie anything into Wolverine, I was winning. Yeah, he wishes. And then he I, made... I, th- I think Deadpool was in, if I remember rightly, the Weapon X program, right? Uh, kind of. So, um, something I think you're going to like. What Danny DeVito's character was to Arnold Schwarzenegger's character in Twins, Twins yeah. Deadpool was intended to be Wolverine because Liefeld's favourite comic book title before X-Men was Avengers, who had weapons like Captain America's shield, Force Hammer and Hawkeye's bow and arrow he decided to weaponize his new characters as well (laughs) with guns and a sword Uh, in his first appearance Deadpool is hollowed by Tolliver to attack Cable and the New Mutants after subsequently appearing in X-Force Deadpool began making guest appearances 
in different Marvel comics such as The Avengers, Daredevil and Heroes for Hire. In 1992 the character received his own miniseries titled The Circle Chase written by Fabian and penciled by Joe Menderera. It was a relative success and Deadpool starred in the second self-titled miniseries written in 1992 by Mark Wade, penciled by Ian Churchill and inked by Jason Temujin Minor and Bud De La Rose. These names. Uh, you just left it, who wrote it? Yeah. Um, Wade, Wade later commented, frankly, if I'd known Deadpool was such a creep when I agreed to write the miniseries, I wouldn't have done it. Someone who hasn't paid for crimes prevents a problem for me. <laughs> oh, when you said Wade, I thought you were reading like Deadpool's fourth wall criticism of his own comic. No, what, what, one of the... Yeah, Mark Wade. Yeah. Uh, in 1997, Deadpool was given his own ongoing title, initially written by Joe Kelly and the newcomer Ed McGuinness as an artist. Deadpool became an action comedy parody of the cosmic drama, anti-hero heavy comics of the time. Uh, the series firmly established his supporting cast, including his prisoner slash den mother, Blind Al, who you can remember from the film. Uh, if you haven't read the comics, and his best friend Weasel. The ongoing series gained cult popularity for its unorthodox main character and its balance of angst, pop culture, slapstick, and the character became less of a villain, though the element of his moral ambigu ambiguity... Ambiguity. Whatever, remained. Uh, the writer Joe Kelly noted... With Deadpool, we could do anything we wanted because everyone just expected the book to be cancelled every five seconds so nobody was paying attention. We could get away with it. Reportedly, Kelly introduced the fourth-wall breaking gimmick. So that's what I think all should be. people should just do that in general. Well, just do it like your series is going to be cancelled and just do whatever. Yeah, that's true, but if you're writing... X Men or Spider Man, your editor's going to be on your ass. I think that's kind of the point. You can't really sneak that stuff by. It's probably it's it's really it's more of a criticism of how big companies work, and that they they commission this stuff, but they don't really pay attention to what it is. And then once it gets popular, then they try and control it. Mm -hmm. uh, the series was taken over by Christopher Priest, who noted that he found Kelly's issues to be complex and a little hostile to new readers like me, and that by 37 he realised it was okay to make Deadpool look stupid. Kelly may have introduced Deadpool to breaking the fourth wall, but Priest could be credited for establishing it as an essential part of the character's personality and worldview. Priest left the series after only one year in issue 45 uh, going into the 2000s now uh, for a time writers who followed generally ignored the fourth wall entirely until Gail Simone took over with issue 65 her version is remembered for the frequent use of the y little yellow boxes Deadpool lasts until issue number 69 at which point it was relaunched as a new title with a similar character named Agent X in 2002 if that means anything to you sounds like cable yeah, uh, this occurred during a line-wide revamp of X-Men related comics uh, with Cable becoming Soldier X and X-Force becoming yeah. X-Static Soldier no. X, that was terrible that didn't last long, Cable and Deadpool was aware of that mm. Simone notes that when I took the Deadpool job the revamp hadn't been planned um, I don't really care what she has to say uh, blah 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 it appeared that Deadpool was killed in an explosion fighting the supervillain Black Swan. Uh, Deadpool's manager, Sandy Brandenburg, later founded Agency X with a mysterious man called Alex Hayden, who later took the name dubbed Agent X. Deadpool later returned to the series. Simone left the title after seven issues due to creative differences with the series editor. Uh, Deadpool's next starring appearance came in 2004 with the launch of... Cable and Deadpool. Deadpool and Cable. Which way around was it? Cable and Deadpool. Cable and Deadpool, yeah. Where Deadpool I, th I think it's fair to say this is the point where Cable started to get some mainstream, at least in the comic book world, some mainstream success. This is where I first noticed and It's where the popularity started to take off, really, I think. Well, it's kind of the thing 
uh, like with uh, Iron Fist and Power Man. Except yeah. I guess these titles weren't really lagging that bad because they kind of did that as a knee-jerk reaction to the fact that the comic books, the series were failing, so they just whacked them together as opposed to this. I guess they were just kind of getting off well, the ground. Uh, yeah, and I, I think Deadpool, like I say, was getting, was getting more and more cult popularity. I think the fact you just said there, there were creative differences, and that's why Simone left. That's a different from when he first launched, and I was paying attention. With Cable, I think we talked in the Cable superhero files, they were struggling with what to do for him for a long time um, post the uh, the nineties anti-hero thing. And the Soldier X thing you were talking about, I, remember, I couldn't remember what the name it was when we did the bio, that was pretty much, it seemed like the last step in, oh God, we don't know what we're doing, so let's just throw these two, let's throw him with Deadpool and see if it works, and it did. Mm. Well, uh teaming up in various adventures of both of them. This title was cancelled with issue number 50 and replaced by a new cable miniseries in March 2008. Deadpool then appeared briefly in Wolverine Origins uh, before they launched another Deadpool title in September 2008. Uh, it began as a secret invasion tie in in the first art the character is seen working with Nick Fury to steal data on how to kill the Skull Cree Queen Varanka uh, Norman Osborn steals the information that Deadpool had stolen from the scrolls and subsequent stories deal with the fallout from that um, right down your way explain the first thing Osborn does is try and take care of the situation is to bring in a high gun to take Deadpool down which would be Tiger Shark that would be the standard thing to do, but of course everything about Deadpool is non-standard, so it goes completely awry and Norman has to get serious about things. The story also sees the return of Barb, agent of Hydra. I didn't want the book to become Deadpool and friends, so the character would drift in and out, but Bob was someone I definitely wanted to bring in, and it had to be at the perfect moment when I was putting this storyline together that the moment prevented itself. This all led to... That was one of my favourite things in the movie. The fact that even without the rights of the character, they still somehow managed to sneak in Bob. Except they couldn't call him, I don't think they could call him Bob of Hydra, right? It was just Bob of random soldier people. Yeah, this all led directly to a confrontation with the new Thunderbolts in Magnum Opus, which crossed between Wolverine Volume 2, Issues 8 to 9, and Thunderbolts Issue 130 to 131. Uh, in Deadpool issue number 15, Deadpool decides to become a hero, resulting in conflicts with proper heroes like Spider Man, who he had recently encountered in The Amazing Spider Man issue 611 as part of the gauntlet and leading to a free issue arc where he takes on Hit Monkey, a character who debuted in the same month in the digital then print one shot. Uh, another ongoing series, Deadpool Mark with a Mouth, launched in 2009. In it, Deadpool teams with Headpool from Marvel Zombies 3 and 4. Any mm -hmm. any opinions on that? No, not at all. But it's by this point, I think 2009 was the same year that dodgy ass Wolverine movie came out that he was in. By this point, it was pretty much full blown. Obviously, the when the movie came out, that made it even more. But by this point, he wasn't really a cult anymore. Like I say, he's hanging out with Spider Man. Uh, I think he had a video game come out around this time, maybe a couple of years later. He, by now, he was a big staple of Marvel, and I was trying to find a place for him. Mm -hmm. uh, a special anniversary issue titled Deadpool uh, Nine, issue 900 was released in October 2009. It featured on stories written by several authors, with the main feature being written by the original Deadpool series writer Joe Kelly and drawn by Deadpool's creator Rob Liefeld. A third Deadpool ongoing series, Deadpool Team Up, was launched in 2009. The series featured Deadpool teaming up with different heroes from the Marvel Universe in each issue, such as Hercules. Deadpool also joined the cast of the new Uncanny X-Force team. Um, another Deadpool series, titled Deadpool Core, uh, was released in 2010. Besides Deadpool himself, this series featured alternate versions of Deadpool, including Lady Deadpool, who debuted in Deadpool Merc with a Mouth, Issue 7, Headpool, the Marvel Comics Universe incarnation, then reduced to a severed head. Uh, the two new characters, Kidpool, a child, and Dogpool, a dog, inventive. 
the the series it lasted 12 issues uh, Marvel also published Deadpool titles through the Marvel Knights and Max imprints Deadpool Wade Wilson's War and Deadpool Max uh, Deadpool Volume 2 uh, in the story arc dead Wade is cured of his healing ability and becomes mortal as a side effect he also has his old unscarred face once again although he spent the majority of the story arc looking forward to dying he suppresses his desires in order to protect his friend and sidekick Hydra Bob after he lost his healing factor Wilson claim that he felt more alive than ever however after a harsh beating from intelligentsia Wade realised that he'd let his ability to heal compensate for skill so he decided to ask for help from Taskmaster in training Taskmaster had asked Wilson to help him steal pin particles from shield but actually he allowed Black Box to study Wade in order to prepare his vengeance against Wilson for letting him know that Deadpool lost his healing factor uh, Wade managed to defeat Black Box, Black Tom and Black Swan but in the issue his face was burned and disfigured again former FBI agent Alison Kemp wanted to get revenge on Deadpool because of his involvement in an accident which left her in a wheelchair uh, and she called such other enemies as dead enemies of Deadpool such as T-Ray and Slayback and trained them to kill Deadpool Deadpool infiltrated their base and managed to get T-Ray and Slayback killed when Kemp was about to kill herself in an explosion which would kill Wade in the process he convinced her not to attack him in that moment he was surprised by the returned evil Deadpool who informed Wade that the serum they took was not permanent reasons why Wade fa Wade's face didn't heal or a finger he lost grew back so Wade would return after evil Deadpool shot him Daniel's Daniel Way's Deadpool series concluded with issue sixty three. Are you familiar with that? Good God, no. I mean, I, you know, I like Deadpool, but I don't think I could read his own comic. I've always preferred him with someone else. Is why I like Cable and Deadpool. I liked his run in um, X Force and Wolverine's team. And all that was fun, but in terms of his own comic, it gets a bit out there for me. It's interesting though, you just mentioned Black Tom there. I think Black Tom Cassidy is going to be the villain of the, the second movie, isn't it? Yeah, apparently. So I've heard. Um, so during the events of Original Sin, it was revealed that Deadpool was tricked into killing his parents by a scientist known as the Butler. However, Deadpool don't know about this. Much later, he crashed with, clashed with Carnage, believing the universe was telling was telling to defeat him. After several fights and getting torn into pieces, Deadpool bonds with Mercury teams, four symbiotes, Phage, Riot, Lasher and Agony. Playing my game mind games, Deadpool tricks Shriek into using his shapeshifting abilities to make her disorientated and having a flee. After the symbiotic Deadpool and Carnage fought again, Deadpool captures Shriek and forces her to impersonate himself, making it tricked Carnage into almost killing her in the process. Feeling broken after a mental breakdown, Carnage allowed himself to be arrested and was placed in an unlocked cell while sitting in the cell until it while sitting in the cell until he was he was his own self. Carnage swore revenge on Deadpool. Deadpool, after defeating Carnage, gives Mercury Team symbiotes to Lasher, a war dog who helped Deadpool fight Carnage while also bonded to a symbiote. A lot of symbiote stuff there. Uh, let's go on to the fictional... Let's get on to the character biography. Yeah? You're joking, that wasn't the biography? No, that was just a little bit of tidbits here and there, just to give people, you know... Someone needs to edit these Wikipedia articles, man. Wikipedia? What are you talking sure. about? All from your head. Straight from your head, it's not like anyone saw your phone there. Superhero files. Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> He's in shop for about 15 minutes. Oh. Lot there where? Lot, I like that. Yeah, there you go. Oh, well. The character's backstory has been presented as vague and subject to change within the narrative he is unable to remember his personal history due to a mental condition whether or not his name was even Wade Wilson is subject to speculation since one of his nemeses T. Ray claims in Deadpool issue 33 that, is, that he is a real Wade Wilson and that Deadpool is a vicious murderer who stole his identity. There have been other dubious stories about his history at one point the supervillain Loki claimed to be his father. Frequently revelations are later retconned or ignored altogether in that one issue Deadpool himself joked that whether he is actually Wade Wilson depends on the writer or the preferred reader. He is professed to be Canadian. The original story had him join in the Weapon X program after being kicked out of the United States Army 
Army Special Forces and given an artificial healing factor based on Wolverine's factor, Dr. Emerus Kilbrew, one of the head scientists. Do... I don't expect you to know this, but do Canadians serve in the American military? Um... That thing? Maybe... It depends who his parents were. Maybe he had, like, joint citizenship. Sure, that makes sense. Hmm. Uh, Wade Wilson grew up in Clare, Saskatchewan. I went to school in Wadena, Saskatchewan. Which is a Canadian province, to all those people mm-hmm. who don't know, which I learnt last night. Uh, Deadpool is aware that he's a fictional comic book character who commonly breaks the fourth wall, which is done by a few other characters in the Marvel Universe. Can you name any? No. Oh, no, don't say you're either, so. Um, and this is used <laughs> to humorous effect. He also has conversations with his two internal monologues, which are shown in caption boxes in his panels. In Deadpool issue 28, it is revealed that the villain Dr. Bong, a foe of Howard the Dark, is a logical voice appearing in the yellow captions. And in Deadpool Annual 1 in 2014, it was revealed that Madcap, a foe of. Captain America is a psychotic voice appearing in the white captions with a typewriter serif. Deadpool is depicting as having a regenerative healing factor which not only prevents him from being permanently injured through enhanced cell regeneration throughout his body but also causes psychosis and mental instability as his neurons are also affected by the accelerated regeneration. He's also thought that while his psychoses are a handicap they're also one of his assets that make him extremely unpre- make him an extremely unpredictable opponent is that something you agree with sure <laughs> taskmaster who has a photo reflexive memory which allows him to copy anyone's fighting skill by observation when they're unable to defeat deadpool due to his chaotic and improvised fighting style taskmaster has also stated that deadpool is an expert at distracting his opponents the character has been known for his talkative nature and been nicknamed are we back to this the murder queen of mouth yeah. Deadpool has also been portrayed to have a strong sense of core morality in Uncanny X Force. He storms out after Wolverine tries to rationalise Phantom X killing Apocalypse, who was a, at the time in child form. After Wolverine argues that Deadpool is motivated solely by money, Archangel reveals that Deadpool never cashed any of his checks. You were nodding your head there. That's a story you're familiar with. Yes, indeed. It was a. It was a cool comic and a weird thing where Deadpool wound up being like the moral conscience because everyone did something deep. Like, you could tell Wolverine wanted to kill the kid but wouldn't do it. And the Phantom X is kind of like Deadpool, I suppose, and that is crazy, but for a different reason where there's like two brains and one head kind of thing. And then Deadpool befriended a child apocalypse for a while. Okay. Um. In December 2013, Deadpool was confirmed as being pansexual by Deadpool writer Jerry Duggan via Twitter. There's a fact for you. Uh, powers That's like Captain Jack. That omnisexual. I don't know. Okay, basically we'll nail anything, right? Yeah, I don't know. There's, so, sure there's so many terms. Um, Deadpool's primary power is an accelerating healing factor depicted by various writers at differing levels of efficiency. Uh, officially endowed Dr. Kilbrew from the web endowed by Dr. Kilbrew for the Weapon X program. This enables him to regenerate any destroyed tissues at a superhuman rate as well as making him immune to diseases. Deadpool's healing factor is also strong enough that he's survived complete incineration and decapitation more than once. Although his head is normally has to be reunited with his body to heal a decapitation wound, he was able to regrow his head after having it pulverized by the Hulk in the graphic novel Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe. Uh, Deadpool's brain cells are similarly affected with dying neurons being rejuvenated at a super accelerated rate. This allows Deadpool to recover from any head wounds and renders him nearly invulnerable to psychic and telepathic powers, although this ability is inconsistent. Uh, It has been revealed that at the time his healing ability was given to him, Deadpool suffered from some form of cancer. After the healing factor was given to him, it made his normal cells, as well as his cancerous cells, unable to die, giving him a heavily scarred appearance beneath his suit. Deadpool's body is highly resistant to most drugs and toxins due to his enhanced cell regeneration. Uh, 
it's for example it's extremely difficult for him to be intoxicated it can also be affected by certain drugs such as tranquilizers if he is exposed to a large enough dose so pretty much like Wolverine yeah except can Wolverine have his head lopped off um well the thing is Wolverine is that they wouldn't go that far you know part of cutting more Deadpool dead of is the joke is you can do anything with him but Wolverine he wouldn't do that he has I think it was in Ultimate Marvel though, but he was ripped in half once by the Hulk his head I don't know yeah, Deadpool is effectively immortal, although he's died several times. He's still alive 800 years in the future where the new X-Force encounters him. Uh, in addition, Thanos once declared that Deadpool should consider yourself cursed with life out of jealousy over Deadpool's status as ladies, Lady Death's love interest. Uh, his enemy, T-Ray, later resurrected him under Thanos' instruction using an artifact that had been given to him. Later, Deadpool was informed that Thanos had placed a curse on him and tracked, tracked Thanos down. He revealed it was the only thing keeping Wade alive was the spell of darkest necromancy. Although Thanos removed the curse in order to kill Deadpool, he felt forced immediately to bring him back using a fusion of necromancy and science in order to request his aid in t tr uh, tracking down Mistress Death who had gone missing. So it ties into Thanos there a little bit. Uh, Deadpool is a trained assassin and mercenary adept in multiple forms of martial arts and an expert swordsman and marksman. Although in early years he was originally portrayed as having superhuman strength, he is no longer depicted of, as having this ability. Over the years, Deadpool has owned a number of personal teleportation devices. Also, Deadpool's first ongoing comic, he possesses a device that projected holographic disguises, allowing him to go undercover or conceal his appearance. He also has a magic satchel containing all of his unlimited weaponry and ammo. That's pretty cool. I guess. Bit <laughs> Batman, though, isn't it? Well, no, because Batman don't have weaponry. Uh, mm. You guess, don't they? Utility belt. It's yeah. all there. Yeah. Uh, Deadpool is multilingual with ability to speak fluently in German, Spanish, and Japanese, in addition to his native English. Since Deadpool is aware he's a fictional character, he uses his knowledge to advantage to his advantage to deal with opponents or gain knowledge which he should not normally have access to, such as reading past issues of his or others comics. Uh, Deadpool also knows he has a Wikipedia article and hope his friends will keep this page updated. Not that I'd know anything about that, but maybe he knows about the superhero files anyway. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about Deadpool, correct? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, so I'm Sam. I'm Matt. And that's it. We're closing the files. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>